It all started with um, uh, back around 2011, uh, DC Nation and Warner Brothers were, were creating this block of, of shorts for cartoons and it's kind of funny because they called my husband, Craig McCracken, and said, Craig, do you want to do some of these shorts? And I went, oh, 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 oh me, 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 me. <laughs> and they were like, oh my god, yes, of course, Lauren, come in. And I pitched them um, Super Best Friends Forever. They liked it immediately, got to produce the shorts. The shorts did really well. We developed it as a TV show, we pitched it around for a little while and I couldn't quite find a home. I loved Super Best Friends Forever so much and it's funny because it was just this short thing that didn't seem like a, a very huge thing, but it just resonated with people. It was the one thing that wasn't ever a real, sh you know, a full on show that still when I do those conventions where I go to promote other things, people would bring up maquettes and like images from that show and I was like, God, that, that should have that should have done something. It should, it's, it's made such an impact for this little thing. So then, you know, several years later, they call me up again and say like, we want to take what you did with Super Best Friends Forever and make it an evolution of DC Superhero Girls. So I was able to take kind of the personalities that I had developed for just at that time, Supergirl, Wonder Girl, and Batgirl pushed them in a little bit of a different direction, but really the heart of those Super Best Friends characters are there, and then get to expand the group out into six full characters, really rounded out depiction of, of different types of teenage, teenage girls. What took you so long? The biggest evolution from Super Best Friends Forever to DC Superhero Girls was uh, the format. Bigger, longer stories, more characters, um, and the opportunity to have a show where we could actually have characters fight yeah. with one another. <laughs> uh, that doesn't happen a lot in girl shows. We got to dive deeper into the characters' personalities, their problems, their flaws, their lives, and then also into the bigger superhero plots of like who they're fighting, why they're fighting them, and how they have to save the day. When Lauren brought me on to do the show, really it was very early. We were developing the characters, the world, you know, who they were as teens versus who they were as superheroes. And the biggest thing was going back to secret identities because who you are when you're that age is not quite settled. And so bringing back secret identities from the original DC Superhero Girls is something we really wanted to do as a metaphor for a teen's life, especially you know a teen girl when she's all these different ways where her friends, her teachers, her parents, and what that means. And so we were really looking for how are these girls as teens versus how are they as superheroes? And the stories and the, the action and the comedy all comes from these very different characters and who they are is mirrored with their powers but also their personalities. Basically we wanted to show that there is real stakes. The way we stylize and design the world in that design style, it feels real. So it's not all very uh, cartoony and cute. But we also felt, you know, we, we want to bring to girls something that it's epic and beautiful. And uh, the word elegant came, kept on coming up, you know, and, but it's still at the same time it can be urban. I brought some of my street art experience, you know, to, to the show. Because, you know, at that age, even if something is like an alleyway in downtown LA, it still feels like, oh my God, this is awesome, this beautiful world seen through the eyes of, uh, of a teenager at that age. Now is the time for female superheroes because it's been a long time coming. I worked with my husband on the Powerpuff Girls. That was a long time ago and we thought at that time, all right, girl superheroes, we made it work, people liked it, and then we pitched more girl superhero shows and we got a lot of girls don't like superheroes, we don't need it, only boys care about superheroes and they don't want to watch girls. And that was happening for years and years and years and years, but something fascinating happened uh, several years back where girls started buying comic books and the comic book companies started noticing that, which is was the important part because girls have always bought comic books and just people just decided not to care or didn't notice for some reason. So with this flood of girls buying comic books, people suddenly became open to more girl superheroes and they'd give it a try and then it would work because girls want to see it. And then we're also in this wonderful time where boys are getting less and less weird about watching girls or dealing with girls because we're all raising our sons right <laughs> for a change. So I, I feel like we've just we're just in this beautiful shift in in culture that is, you know, working out really well for us right now. <laughs> Read Comics Beat!